the chakra of the goddess lies behind the sternum bone in the spinal cord. <coughs> this chakra is placed above the Bhavasagar, above the void, as we call it in Sahaja Yoga. And the bridge that has to be crossed by the bhaktas, by the seekers, <coughs> is guarded by her. She is the one, she helps her children to come through that passage when there are negative forces trying to attack on a seeker. This chakra is placed at the back of the sternum bone, as I told you. In childhood, the antibodies are formed in the <coughs> sternum bone. They are the warriors of the Sainikas of the day. Until the age of twelve years, they grow and multiply and ultimately they all get distributed all over the body. And a human being is made able to face any outside invasion on him. These antibodies know how to fight. They are extremely confident and they know who are their enemies. They have all these messages built in themselves. So when the anti-God element enters into the being through any process, say through food, through words, through action, through devilish people, or black magic, these antibodies combine together, collectively fight the invaders. Those who do not have their central heart properly developed suffer from tremendous insecurity all their lives. When they are children, you try to control them by frightening. These children later on become extremely insecure. They are afraid of darkness, they are afraid of night. Some of them are afraid of everything. Because the antibodies that are built in the body are not sufficient in number. And being the center so weak, the person feels extremely insecure. Later on in life, when the child goes to the school or he tries to work, out something for the future, then also his confidence can be shaken by parents, teachers and outside people. So it is very important to understand children who are grown. 
In the West, they analyze everything and try to put human beings into compartments. First, the child is a child according to them. Child has no innocence and is extremely selfish. Second part is adolescence, which they think is a very arbitrary, moody stuff. In India, we do not know that there is something like adolescence. Now these other adolescent people form a group and they start criticizing or making fun of all the elders. At a very young age it starts. First they make fun of the teachers, then of the parents, then of all the people who are senior to them. They start becoming extremely active in their brains because they see too many televisions and things like that. And then they start behaving at a very young age in such a violent ways that one cannot imagine. I used to live about twenty-five miles away from London and every time I would go to London I would find some children doing some sort of a mischief somewhere. But one day some of them entered into my compartment and they started pulling out all the covers, thrusting their knives into the seats, opening out all the upholstery. I was just sitting and watching. So I said, now are you tired? Please sit down. What's the problem? They said, we are all very angry. I said, for what? Why are you angry? I said, we are just angry. I we... said, but you have to be angry for something. They were children going to good schools, definitely wearing very good clothes. And then I had to, when the train stopped, I called the ticket collector and told him that these boys have been doing all this hooliganism in the compartment and you better look at it. And he came in and he said, this is a common thing. And then somehow or other he took them out. But the only thing I felt about them is that all of them had their center heart catching. On the Kundalini they are catching their center heart. But when they saw Me they sat down, they were quiet, they listened to Me. I settled their center heart. And most of them said, We are angry with our mother. Why? Because our brothers are angry. But why your brothers are angry? Then I discovered that Freud has given these funny ideas against the mother. Mother itself, can you imagine? What an anti God activity it is. To an India, mother is the primal thing. Any India. Because his sense of security lies in the mother. Even if the father is hot tempered, is angry, still they depend on the mother. Because mother knows when to get angry and when not to get angry. She has the discrimination. And she is the one who protects them. The idea of mother is completely blasted in the West. And this is the reason why the children of that country feel so insecure and when they grow they are extremely insecure. You won't believe that all the time they are polishing their brass, cleaning their house, 
but not even a rat enters their houses. And if they have to talk to someone, they'll make a person stand outside and talk from inside, especially in London. Because they are literally frightened. Nobody will believe the British who ruled us are such frightened people. But they are. They are frightened of each other, they are frightened of themselves. The reason is the center heart is absolutely weak. I have told you the first reason, the family insecurities. The child does not know when he comes back from school whether his mother would be there or she would be gone. They don't have mothers who can bear a lot from the husbands and smile and show no signs of their agony to their children. But the mothers in that country I have seen always try to use their children from all kinds of emotional blackmail, you can call it. They try to torture the child by telling all the things the husband is doing to them and whatever is the problem they are facing with the husbands. So the child is not secured by the mother, but on the contrary, child starts giving security to mother then. At a very young age it starts and the child becomes extremely negative and left-sided. He feels that he is born in a place full of hatred, insecurity and fear. When a person is frightened, this center starts breathing fast, giving rhythmic instructions to all the antibodies. With that you feel you are getting a palpitation in the heart. This palpitation is nothing but a signal to all the antibodies to fight the emergency of an attack. But when somebody builds up insecurity later on in life, it becomes a physical problem. If they have insecurities earlier, it is an emotional problem. But later on in life, when one develops a insecurity, any kind, like a wife is insecure about her husband, Husband is a loafer or a bad man and carrying on with other women. So the motherhood of the wife is challenged. And when her motherhood is challenged, she may get the weakening of the center by which she may suffer quite a lot and may have even breast cancer. These insecurities can be also self made. Imagine. People can just think about it and build up some sort of insecurities which are of no actual existence. But such fears are very much more in the West because the life in the West has no mooring, has no explanation. Whatever you ask them, they'll say, what's wrong? The husband will say, what's wrong in having a key? And the wife will also say, all right, if he wants to have a key, let him have it. In India, no woman would tolerate such a situation. She would starve, she would do everything, but she will never touch a man who has a key. So the basis of the strength of Indian women is their sense of chastity. The sense of chastity in the Indian women is so great that nothing can deter them as long as they are chaste. But if they are not chaste, then fear settles in them very fast. Chastity is the strength of women. And that's why those women who have fear, mostly have 
a problem of their chastity being challenged. A woman who is frightened that her chastity may be disturbed also can develop a problem with the heart chakra. Such women can develop breast cancers, breathing troubles and other kind of frightening diseases on the emotional level also. This chakra is ruined in women when they lose their only child because their motherhood is finished, they feel. And that is the worst thing that can happen to a woman, if she is a woman. But if she is not a woman, she doesn't feel much and she just behaves in a very manly way. And that's what I've seen in the West, that women really don't much care when their children die. But it is because they are not women. If you are a woman, you definitely feel for your children and their death. But after some time, such a woman comes back again and she accepts the life as it is for the sake of her husband or maybe if she has more relations or other children. She becomes extremely powerful as a reaction to what has happened. That's only possible if your center of heart is all right. Such women do not grudge, do not complain, are extremely serene and can bear up lots of things. They are extremely tolerant and can go to any extent to help their children, but they are never spoiling their children. They never spoil their children because they understand spoiling is much worse than beating the child. They never spoil the children nor ever pamper them and never get dominated by their children. They know I have to guide the child and I have to look after the child, so they look after all the ideals and righteousness and the virtues of the child. And if he tries to get out of it, they go all out to win him over, back to virtue and to better life. But those people, those women who do not care for actual growth of the child may just avoid it and escape. In the men, this chakra is caught up if they have lost their mother very early or if their mother by chance is a very cruel woman. Also this chakra can be caught up by men if they have been to wars and if they have seen frightful things in the war. Such people could be extremely emotional and could be easily be fooled by people who try to win over their emotions. This heart center is caught up by various emotional problems in human beings. Husband and wife, if they all the time quarrel, there's always quarreling in the house, especially if the mother is very dominating, the child develops this center. And if the father is very dominating, the child develops this, the heart itself. So it is very important that husband and wife should never quarrel in the presence of their children. Center heart can be developed in countries where there's all fear, people are frightened. It can be developed by other things in, by which people are frightened, reading books of bad gurus and reading the books about shocking things like many people who read the Kundalini's book have got center heart because they are so frightened about the Kundalini. Anything that frightens you, if you read, can make your heart very, very weak and dangerous. So the right side of 
every human being represents the fatherhood the fatherhood and the fatherhood of a man is very important if this center is spoiled or if there's something wrong with it then you get asthma as a disease asthma is only caused by this center being spoiled or some other combinations with this center asthma is very common among girls and boys and the relationship with the father or the understanding of the father or your own fatherhood is not all right you get this trouble of asthma and for that one has to ask the questions to the sadhakas what sort of a father you have i had one gentleman came and asked me why everybody is asking me what sort of a father you have what sort of a everybody ask me what about your father what about your father what has my father to do with me actually everybody feels the right heart and they have to ask about the father because father decides in the right heart and the principle of fatherhood if it is spoiled if there is a problem with the principle of fatherhood then you get this problem and many other problems uh, which i do not want to discuss now at length but you can understand a person who has no father how diffident he is and how he behaves and also such people those who have not known a father can become very wayward licentious or permissive or could be very much uh, secretly licentious the people who lose their father do not have that lacking uh, lacking uh, they lack in that discipline that the father gives or could be such uh, people who take to a very remorse and unhappy life or they could be very hard on their children or could be extremely kind and spoil the children it could be anyway so it has all both the reactions uh, either uh, too much of love giving or too much of strictness it can be anything or a person could be uh, of this kind may be very strict in childhood and could be extremely lavish in old age it's a it is a very imbalanced personality so the person who has no father has to know that his father is shri ram he should not worry about anything he is a one with one uh, arrow he can kill any number of people so he should have no fear at all about his father not being there or father being dead or something happening like that on the contrary if the father is dead is better to tell him not to worry about uh, you and that you are all right so that you leave your father in peace and ask him to take his birth than to bind him to this earth this is the right heart and the left heart is the mother actually your own mother so ever it is that is the motherhood in the sense that if your mother has been extremely unkind and extremely funny or your relationship with mother is bad then know that there's something wrong on the left hand uh, which is indicated in you so these two points are very important in human beings if a sadhyogi just decides that i have a father and a mother god almighty is my father and my mother then these problems can be easily solved but in sadh yoga it is not what you think that works out it does not like in the car if you sit down and think that i am going to cannot place you won't move you have to move your hands in the same way in sadh yoga you have to move your hands clear your chakras move them higher and put them up it's not what you think is important in sadh yoga not at all you may think uh, that i am doing very well in sadh yoga i am very good but it's not so it is what you actually achieve your ascent is the point so as in the car as i told you you cannot just sit down and think and do the job in the same way you have to run this machine and you have to see that you get all this movement there should be gati in you otherwise there is no sense in just talking about sadh yoga thinking about sadh yoga and uh, convincing yourself that you are a great sadh yogi it is how you manifest it is the point which very few people understand very very few people understand that it has to be manifesting it has to be karyanvit it is not just talk 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 morning till evening even when i am talking now i am opening your heart heart center i'm working it 
even I am talking also, I am opening, it's working. You will see your heart chakra is open by the time I finish my lecture. It is so, because I know how to do it. When I talk, I am just watching where the chakras are catching, what's happening, and I am catching all these points and touching it. I am trying to open it. And that's how it should be, that even when you talk, it should be karyana. Even when you are quiet and raising your hands, it should be karyami. Whatever you do, you should be karyami. Even if you glance at anyone, it should be karyami. It should not be just a uh, kind of a jabbering that we do sometimes about Sahaja The greatest fear human beings have that they think they have done lots of mistakes. And these mistakes are too many. And they can never get realization, they'll be doomed, they'll be going to hell. This is not true at all. Nobody is going to go to hell if that you do not want to. If you want to stop it, you can stop it, the time has come, you are going to be blessed and blessed forever. So may God bless you. Today's lecture I've given you uh, in a way that you should understand the importance of confidence, but not by saying, I am confident, because when you say outwardly, you are actually egoistical. But when you say in your vibrations, then you are confident. May God bless you.